Microsoft's done a great job over the years of creating one-stop places for you to deal with different issues on your computer. For example, if you've got a problem with a device, you go to Device Manager. But where do you go for the mundane, administrative type tasks that take place on any type of computer? I've got it. Let's take a look at Administrative Tools. Administrative Tools has been around in many, many different versions of Windows. It's certainly in every copy of Windows XP, Windows Vista, and Windows 7. Now again, because Vista and 7 are so similar in this aspect, I'm just going to look at 7, but I'm also going to fire up a copy of Administrative Tools under Windows XP, and we're going to do a run-through, a very quick run-through, of the components that you're going to be seeing inside of Administrative Tools. Okay, so to start Administrative Tools in Windows XP, we just go to Control Panel and click on Administrative Tools. Now, if we look really close, what you'll notice here, you'll see these are all shortcuts. That's because these are all MMC snap-ins. So we're going to leave that up, but let's go ahead and start Administrative Tools in Windows 7 as well. So we can see Administrative Tools right there. All right. And you'll see all the little shortcuts. These are all MMC snap-ins as well. So let's kind of just run down the list. First of all, we see both of them have component services. Component services is used to handle what are called COM or COM plus objects. These are, if you have distributed applications that are being used by a whole bunch of individual computers trying to access one particular application, something like that. This is not a place where you're going to go in very often at all. Usually the only time you're coming in here is because somebody's asked you to make some specific type of configuration. So that's component services. Computer management is probably one of the more important tools. We can see we've got disk manager, we've, we can schedule tasks, events, all kinds of different stuff within computer management. We have that in Windows XP as well. Data sources, ODBC, this is for if you have a single database and you don't want people to access the database directly, but instead what you want them to do is to have it go by a particular name. So you can write an application that says, don't go look for the database using this particular, you know, E drive colon backslash kind of thing. You can just kind of give it a name, and then that will allow you to access the database. So both component services and ODBC, those things are rarely touched unless you're in a situation where you've probably got in-house programming and you have programmers who need to make special configurations. Event Viewer keeps track of everything that's been going on in your system. And we're going to be seeing lots of Event Viewer in other episodes, depending on what we're going to be looking at. But Event Viewer is where I want to go when I go, what just happened? Local security policy allows us to do configurations. For example, I can require everybody to use a 10-digit password. Uh, I can set it up so that people can't change their screen saver. Um, things like that. Performance, or called performance monitor in Windows 7. There's a big difference here. These are tools that allow us to be able to track how our system's doing. So if I want to say, how does my CPU run over the course of a day? Or how much tra uh, network traffic am I getting over the course of any given hour? We use tools like this to be able to track performance. It's a really good tool to use to be able to get an idea of how your system's supposed to be working. The last one I want to talk about is services. Services are programs that are running in the background, but they are running even as we speak. So these do all kinds of little background stuff, anything from the clipboard itself to logging events to certificates for web servers, uh, networking stuff, everything that you might possibly need usually runs as a service and it's running in the background. And the services tool is what we use to control that. You may have noticed that I've skipped over some of the utilities inside of administrative tools with Windows 7. There's a reason for that. We have whole other episodes designed to do nothing but talk about a lot of these individual components. But for right now, my goal is to make sure that you go, yes, I am now aware of administrative tools and I know it's a place I can go to get stuff done. So, speaking of places to get stuff done, we've got one more trip. 
I want to head over to System Tools. And guess what? This is one thing that isn't in the control panel. Now, to get to System Tools, just click on the Start button, and then click on All Programs, or if you're in Windows XP Programs, and I need you to locate Accessories right there. Now, once you look underneath Accessories, System Tools, there it is, is right there underneath Accessories. So let's open that up. Now, you'll see there's a bunch of little tools in here. Some of these are kind of interesting. Character Map is a handy tool if you want to insert weird characters into different things. All right. uh, in Windows 7, we can actually get to our computer just by clicking on this. That looks fairly familiar. That's just the same thing that we can do by clicking on the Start button. But some of the ones that are more common in here, this is just a link to control panel. Uh, disk cleanup allows you to clean your system up. Disk defragmenter organizes your hard drive to allow it to run more efficiently. Internet Explorer, no add-ons. This one's actually kind of handy. A lot of times people add so much goo to their web browsers that it starts giving them trouble. So if you want to just start up Internet Explorer, just as though the first time you installed it, you can run it like this. Uh, you can actually make customized characters. Here you can check the resources on the system. Here's your system information tool, which gives you information about your system itself, what type of components you have, resources, that type of thing. System Restore allows you to back up and restore your system from an earlier time. Task Scheduler, if you want to run a backup every morning at 3 a.m., Task Scheduler handles it for you. And then these last two tools, Windows Easy Transfer, this allows you to copy personal information, basically your entire user's folder contents from one system to another. If you're going to be working on a Windows system, you have to know where to look for stuff. The control panel is a good start, but you've got to be able to take it a step further. Don't forget, administrative tools for administrative type issues, and then when you have no place else to look, always check system tools. Between those areas, you will always find the utility you need.